Hello and welcome to Recharge Wrestling. We're here to plug you into the world of professional wrestling. Now, I've got a special show for us this week because unfortunately the other guys aren't available to do the podcast and last minute I've come up with an idea. Um, it's Christmas week, so you know there's not loads to talk about in wrestling at the moment. We're going to be doing some big specials um, coming up. We'll probably have a quiz. We'll definitely have an end of year review. Um, but this week I thought I would do a, a list segment that I'm going to do. I mean, I'm going to do a quick weekly roundup of my thoughts on this week in wrestling um, in on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and um, a little bit of AEW maybe as well. Um, although I haven't written notes down for those last two shows, so that could be interesting. But I'll just give you anything that stood out for me. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to do a list of the top 10 people, and I've got a couple of like wildcard people as well, to dethrone Roman Reigns. And we may use this as a subject with the other guys and they can debate my list with me. Um, but I just thought it'd be something fun for me to go through um, on my own and something you guys can listen to um, whilst you're wrapping Christmas presents or your turkeys in the oven or whenever you listen to this. Um, you know, maybe driving to see some family, you fancy listening to something, put Recharge Wrestling on and uh, yeah, um, hopefully I'll entertain you for not too long because um, I don't want to go don't want to go on forever it's, this is, might be called the Fisher Res Fisher's Wrestling Ramble because it is going to be a bit of a ramble um, but yes um, it's just something I'm trying out but the first so for days where I'm on my own because there, there's quite a few of them um, but you know hopefully we should have the usual guys and maybe some guests on over the next couple of weeks um so just talking about last week's smackdown i have to say i thought it was this was the most watchable smackdown in quite some time um you had a women's tag title match kicking off the show um live morgan and tegan knox um versus damage control decent little match um weird thing with xia lee attack with the hoodie and they later revealed it on the show online which was a bit of a waste of an angle but the match was good um and the champions retained their titles you got some good backstage stuff with the bloodline, as you always do. Um, really good stuff between Jimmy and Roman later on. And then um, Paul gets Adam Pearce to um, make a tag match for Sammy and Roman versus KO and any partner. And this ends up being a huge WrestleMania worthy match. Um, then you get some stuff from the LA Knight, Bray Wyatt um, feud. That was all okay. And then we got a reveal in person of Uncle Howdy. Um, didn't do much, just stood there laughing, which was a bit awkward, but it's definitely a different person to Bray, which was a cool reveal, and I, I have no idea who it is. Then we got a banger of a match between Gunther and Ricochet for the Intercontinental title. That was really, really good. Um, really enjoyed that. And then Strowman saved Ricochet afterwards. We're getting then to against um, Imperium in a street fight, I think, this week. Um, Triple threat match was okay. The tag team match that was a number one made a number one contenders. Heavy hit hit row one with a heavy hitter to face the Usos. So there was a botch from Top Dollar in there, which wasn't particularly nice. I think he hurt his leg, um, which was a shame. But other than that, it was a fun match. Um, Raquel, Raquel got um, taken out again by Ronda and Shayna ahead of a gauntlet match, which is happening this week um, for the number one contendership for the SmackDown Women's Title. I feel like they've overdone those a little bit. And then we got a cool segment at the end with Roman, Sammy, et cetera. And then John Cena popped up on the uh, screen and you could see him. And um, yeah, he he revealed that he got a text from Kevin Owens, cut a great promo, called himself Cena Claus and uh, says, ho, ho, holy shit. He's going to be KO's tag team partner. So that was awesome. Uh, cool reveal. And that, say, that's a huge match. Raw was a decent show as well this week, I thought. We've got Bronson Reed return to WWE. Um, helping the Miz win the ladder match against Dexter Loomis. Um, we had the OC versus the Alpha Academy, and weirdly, Otis was over with this crowd, which I've not really heard before. Um, we had um, Judgment Day in action as well against the Street Profits and uh, with Akira Tozawa ringside. But that was a lame finish, but then we got a cool concept of a... Um, intergender match between Rhea and Tozawa and I thought this was pretty cool with Rhea winning that was a good idea I, I hope they do more stuff like this and I think they're really building Rhea probably for a Royal Rumble win um, soon so I think that's why they're doing this my highlight of Raw was actually the segment between Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss um, 
Alexa, much more interesting, in-depth character explanation. Talked about Bray Wyatt, talked about her past. Really interesting stuff. And then obviously lost it at the end and smashes Belair over the head with a vase. So yeah, really enjoyed that. And it looks like we're finally getting Psycho Heel, Alexa Bliss. Hopefully not like stuff, wait, Bray Wyatt stuff. Hopefully more different to that, but still very good. All the same. We got a great match between Sami Zayn and AJ Styles, of course, as well on this Raw. Um, a really good promo as well between Rollins and Austin Theory. Um, Theory calling him the third most successful member of the Shield. Um, at one point, the bloodline uh, surrounded the ring. Theory didn't help Rollins. He, he left and um, they beat Seth down, but KO came out. They had a great backstage segment between the two of them talking about why they split up as a tag team. And KO's had a couple of these. He had one with Elias last week and now he had one with Seth. I thought this was great stuff. Um, then we got Becky and Bailey in a really good women's match. Only women's match will show, unless part of, obviously Rhea Ripley did wrestle. Um, really good match. And surprisingly, Becky Lynch losing. Um, wasn't expecting that. She's beat, lost a few times recently, but yeah, losing to Becky, um, obviously with the help of damage control. And I feel like this feud's going to continue and that Becky may well get some help. I said ages ago, I could see them maybe put in Alba Fire and Dewdrop with her or something like that. Um, that would be make it a good feud. Or maybe you put a different tag team that's going to go up against damage control. I'm not really sure, but I feel like Becky needs some backup here. She's never really had that before. She's always been on her own. In fact, she talks about that in the promo, which I thought was interesting. So I think she's going to hint towards needing now some people because that, that, I think that's why she mentioned it. And then we got a really fun main event, of course, between Rollins and KO versus the Usos. Um, really good match. Fear, it was chaotic. Fury took out Rollins. Um, with a briefcase, um, Seth with a stomp on the outside to Jay. Owens and Jimmy basically had a one-on-one -on -one match to end it. KO won with a pop-up powerbomb, and then a really cool shot of Sammy trying to sneak in, sneak attack um, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens spotting him, and Sammy kind of sheepishly walking away. Um, that was that from then two shows. NXT... Um, Four women's matches on the shows. So I love the way they represent the women. You had a um, stuff with Grayson Waller and Bron Breaker as well, which is a feud that's kind of building quite nicely. Um, the New Day, of course, defending their tag titles on the show. Cool seeing them in an NXT environment. I think it's really good for them um, at the moment. Uh, obviously, I had an interview with Roxanne with Booker T, which was really cool because obviously Booker T trained her. Um, so there's some really emotional stuff in there. Um, and yeah, it was it was an all right show. It was not too much right. Obviously, Mandy Rose lost. Uh, obviously, been fired last week. We talked about that. If you haven't seen our podcast from last week, me and Keeney go in depth on that. Um, so yeah, that'll be that's an interesting thing to to listen to if you want to hear about what happened to Mandy Rose. But her tag team partners, Toxic Attraction, also wrestled on this show and lost um, in the tag team title triple threat match. So I can see uh, maybe a call up coming for them soon, which. I would have predicted even before, obviously, Mandy went. But certainly now I think they need it um, with no belts or anything. I'm trying to think of anything else significant that happened. That feels about it. It's cool to see Drew Gulak on NXT. I will say that. And then AEW, we haven't done much AEW content recently, unfortunately, because of the timing of where we do the podcast Thursday. Sometimes we haven't all watched it. In fact, you know, and, and to be honest, the interest in AEW at the moment from us is probably a little bit lower. I am still watching Dynamite every week. Um, Really good main event between um, Hikaru Shida and Jamie Hayter. Jamie Hayter is really like becoming a star in the women's division. Uh, FTR losing again, bit baffling. Um, a new sort of faction revealed with Swerve. That was weird with Rick Ross on the show and a couple of other guys. Um, some some good stuff, some not so good stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll be discussing AEW on our end of year review and why we haven't been covering it as much. Um, personally as well so that will be interesting so if you're an AEW fan and you've missed us talking about AEW, you might want to watch the end of the year review um so yeah that's about it for that really the, the week was all right i thought for, for a sort of a christmas week where not a lot happens because there's still quite a long time to the rumble there's no AEW pay-per-views um it was solid i thought smackdown was really good raw best it's been in a while dynamite i think the last three or four weeks has actually stepped up its game again I will say that um, NXT was fine. So yeah, not bad, um, but there's no Raw next week. 
uh, and we've got a tape smackdown. So I'm not expecting too much coming out the next week, uh, but that's probably why hopefully we'll do a special next week with all of us on here. Right then, my little fun segment at the end. Let me know what you think in the comments or on Twitter. Um, follow us at Recharge Wrestle if you're not already, by the way. Um, let us know what you think. Um, if I've missed any glaring, you know, if there's any glaring omissions or there's somebody in there you think, why are they in there? But these are my 10 people to beat Roman Reigns and I'll give a brief, brief explanation why. And they're in order. So one to 10. I'll start at 10, obviously. Um, I have got a couple of wild cards as well that I'll mention afterwards that I haven't put in there. But, you know, could. There's, there's storylines that you could see them doing it. Number 10, The Rock. Um, obvious reason why he's on this list. Now, I don't think you should beat Roman Reigns for the title. I think that would be a terrible move. You need to put over a younger talent and make him champion. The Rock, what's he going to do with a World Cup title? He's just going to vac- vacate it. But they are possibly, you know, they're trying to get The Rock for WrestleMania. You could possibly see it happening. So it wouldn't surprise me massively. You know, that's why he's on the list because the match is a possibility. The match is huge. It's one of the biggest WrestleMania matches of all time, I would say. The Rock, the Rock was probably in his last match against the current biggest star in wrestling and his cousin in Roman Reigns. It's, it's massive. And so that's why The Rock has to be on the list because there is the possibility of him coming back at the Rumble, winning the Rumble and beating Roman. He shouldn't. And I wouldn't even do this much for the title. I would have Roman wrestled twice at Mania. Once on night one for the title, then with Rock on night two. I'll explain who I think it should be at the end when we get to number one, possibly number two as well, but I think there's other plans for number two. Number nine, and this one's out there. You have to throw an out there one and don't shout, but CM Punk is my number nine. Now, people are probably thinking you're mad, um, you know, with all the AW drama. We don't even know if he's still under contract, but if he does leave AW and he's free to have one last big payday. CM Punk versus Roman Reigns would be absolutely massive. Um, and you could have Punk win, have a really short title run and then just retire and go in the Hall of Fame or something. But yeah, I thought I'd just throw that out there for a bit of a joke, really, almost. But would it be the craziest thing that ever happened? He's one, he's all, I mean, he left WWE originally because he wanted to that WrestleMania main event. This would be a huge WrestleMania main event that they could do throw some money at Punk, he does one last match, beats Roman Reigns in vacates or title, or something crazy like that. I wouldn't do it personally, but stranger things have happened, right? Now we get on to, now we've got the two sort of really sort of crazy ideas out of the way. If you're still listening after those two crazy ideas, they get a little bit more sensible now. So number eight, I've gone for Gunther. Uh, obviously at the moment, he's the IC champion, but you could have him easily drop the IC title to Braun Strowman, potentially, or somebody else, or lose it in a multi-man match where he doesn't have to get pinned, win the Rumble or the Elimination Chamber or something like that. Um, and you could have Gunter, but not only Gunter, you could do Imperium versus the Usos, and that's the key to this, is you can have a, a two factions feuding, which is always fun. You'd probably have to turn one of them face. Um, but, I mean, Gunter versus Roman Reigns would be a money match. And I, I'm, I'm sure it will happen one day, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. It's low on my list, but you know, if you guys listen to me regularly, you know Gunter is one of my absolute favourite wrestlers. So he was always going to be on the list to defray Roman Reigns. I hope he's a world champion one day, but I can't see it being just yet. Number seven, Bobby Lashley. Um, obviously, he's been world champion fairly recently, like a year ago. But he's just lost the US title. He's just had this storyline with Adam Pearce. You know, you could do a storyline where he's not supposed to be in the Royal Rumble. He comes in, beats someone up, steals their spot and loses it and wins it. And we haven't really had a proper Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley feud. Um, So that would be really interesting. And a bit like the Gunter one, you could turn this into faction warfare because we saw on Raw MVP talk about Bobby, want to talk about uh, to Pearce about Bobby Lashley. We've seen Cedric and Shelton together kind of in segments backstage getting beaten up. I think the Hurt Business could come back. I think Hurt Business versus Bloodline would be an absolute money feud that you could do. And Bobby Lashley is a credible person to be. He's not a young talent that you're putting over. He's not someone that's not been champion before, but he is believable to beat Roman Reigns. And like I say, it's actually quite a fresh match. It's not Brock Lesnar where they've done it a million times or John Cena. Lashley versus Roman could be money and Lashley is defroning him wouldn't wouldn't be the craziest thing. Number six, Solo Sokoa. Now, 
Now you think he's that's a bit crazy because obviously he's been it would be a bit rushed. But this is assuming he doesn't lose the title yet. So if he could face the Rock at WrestleMania, win, be champion for months, months, months more, maybe even till next year's WrestleMania. But slowly but surely, you build up Solo Sokoa because he's in the bloodline. He keeps winning matches. He never speaks. He never does anything. You don't know how he's feeling or what he does. And then one day he snaps and he just turns on the bloodline, beats up Roman or something. Well, says he wants a title and shockingly wins. Um, it would put over a new star massively. Do I think they're going to do this? Absolutely not. Do I think Solo Sokoa is probably ready for it? No. But what storyline it would be if it came from inside the bloodline? And I'm getting. I'm sure you've you're probably thinking there's going to be more bloodline members later on on this list. And you'd be absolutely right if you think that. So yeah, Solo Sokoa at number six. Number five, Kevin Owens. Again, if you watch this show regularly, you'll know Kevin Owens is one of my absolute favorite wrestlers. Maybe my favorite wrestler in current day. And obviously, I think he's probably facing Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. That's where it looks like the direction is going. If you really wanted you could somehow, some way, have Kevin Owens win that match. Maybe with the help of Sami Zayn. Sami turns on the bloodline. That's what sets up, you know, a Sami Roman feud, Sami Uso's feud, whatever you want to do. And that would mean you can then have Cody challenge KO or something like that at Rumble or Sami versus KO. Or I don't, I don't know where you'd go with it. That's the only problem. But Kevin Owens... Again, another person who's been world champion, but he's long overdue a title run of sorts. I don't think it'll be the world title. I hope he gets a tag team or intercontinental title run soon, and I think he will get one of those. Um, but yeah, Kevin Owens has to be on the list, doesn't he? Because um, he's one of the most over people in WWE. He's in a storyline with Roman Reigns right now, so he has to be on the list. Number four, Seth freaking Rollins. Another obvious person, obviously the history of the Shield, Beat him at last year's Royal Rumble by DQ. Um, I think Rollins versus Reigns is still a huge, huge match that you could do at WrestleMania. Or maybe you have the Roman, again, here, Roman Reigns beat the Rock at uh, WrestleMania. And then you could do Rollins versus uh, Reigns at SummerSlam or something like that. Or you could even have Money in the Bank cash in number two from Seth Rollins. He wins Money in the Bank, cashes in on Roman, repeats his heist of the century. There's so much you could do with Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. The story still hasn't ended between them, in my opinion. Rollins mentioned Reigns and the bloodline on the show, got attacked by them. I think Rollins could still be very much involved in with Roman and with the bloodline in the future. And so he's high up on my list. And I do think it's a genuine possibility. Um, and I would love to see it. And I know Krusty, which in this, he'd probably be even higher on his list because let's face it, he's a Seth Rollins mark. But He's high up on my list too, number four. Number three, Jay Uso. Now, what a storyline it would be if we went full circle. Go go back a couple of years, Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso. That amazing feud they had, in my opinion, where Jimmy was gone for a while and Jay was main event Jay Uso and they did Jay versus Roman and then it coached slowly, you know, they, they brought the bloodline together. How would it, crazy would it be if we went full circle Roman somehow sides with Sammy, but kicks out Jey Uso out of the bloodline. Jey Uso then goes for Roman and becomes unbelievably becomes the head of the table. That would be shocking. It won't happen, but the storyline is there 100%. He could say, look, I've improved massively since, um, you know, you beat me easily or whatever last couple of years ago. Jimmy would probably be in his corner. It, it could be a Kofi Mania star moment as a single star, but for Jey Uso, I think that would be fascinating. Um, number two, it's Sami Zayn. Now, Sami Zayn might be a lot of people's number one. Uh, I've seen a lot of talk saying that this should end with Sami dethroning Roman because even though the story, main story has been with Jey Uso, there's a lot of stuff with Roman, obviously. But I think we're going to get Sami and KO versus the Usos at Mania for the tag titles. But Sami is going to get kicked out of the bloodline soon. Let's face it. I think we're getting Sammy versus Roman in Montreal at the Elimination Chamber, which will be an amazing match in front of Sammy's sort of hometown crowd. It's going to be insane. That's what I think is going to happen. So I think Sammy will... I think the turn happens at the Rumble because obviously if they do Roman KO, I think that makes sense for it to happen there. Sammy probably won't attack KO or something. They'll be, they'll they'll kick him out of the bloodline. And then you could ultimately do Sammy versus Roman. You know, he could win the Rumble later on in the night 
okay, I'm coming for you, Roman Reigns. I'm going to beat you. And Kevin Owens sort of helps him beat Roman rather than them going for the tag titles. It's such an obvious storyline. And it's my number two, purely because I think there's a, even more obvious. And I think the Sammy J feud has been going on longer. So the Sammy and J, and then you can involve KO in it as well. So you do Sammy and um, Sammy and KO versus the Usos, leaving the opportunity for my number one to face Roman Reigns and beat him at WrestleMania, which of course is a return in nightmare, American nightmare, sorry, Cody Rhodes. Now he's due back, I think, anytime soon. I think he's going to be a surprise entrant in the Rumble. Not so surprising. Wins the Rumble, hopefully. Simple as that. He's come back for the world title. He's made that clear. That's one of the main reasons he left AEW. He had a brilliant run. I think he earned everyone's respect with the Hell in a Cell match, the, the pop at Mania, everything he's done. I think Triple H will look at it and be like, yeah, he's the guy to beat Roman Reigns. And I think Cody Rhodes ultimately should be the person to beat Roman Reigns. If not him, Sami Zayn, definitely second choice. Jey Uso or Seth Rollins would be cool as well. I wouldn't begrudge KO or Gunter, obviously. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit something different for us. I may do more stuff like this, hopefully with more people involved. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, though. Um, follow us on Twitter, at Recharge Wrestle. Uh, find our podcasts on all good podcast networks. Like and subscribe this video. Subscribe if you haven't already on this YouTube channel. I don't know if this is going to be up as a podcast or just on YouTube yet. So if you're listening on podcasts, find our YouTube or vice versa. I've been Fisher. We'll be back soon, I promise, with a full, proper podcast. I'll see you later. Goodbye.